Um, I am next going to start all of the uh, flat horizontal pieces from the nose, starting from the middle of the nose out on each side, and then gluing on the transom. So these should be just a, a probably a good, I don't know, foot and a half full of strips that should go on really quick. So when each strip is applied, it is glued to the strip next to it and to the transom and to the nose, but it is not glued to the forms. So the staples are the only thing that are actually holding the uh, wood strips to the forms. There is also a layer of masking tape over the forms to prevent glue from binding. Okay, so I got the first 15 strips on. Lickety split in less than an hour. Um, because they just go straight over the transom and glue in there without any problems. But now you see I've got these crescent shapes on the side, plus dealing with the curve of the chine that I have to uh, strip in carefully. And I've finally gotten to less than a board width here in the end. So I've got a couple more boards that I will keep horizontal uh, and glue up to the front of the nose and take over the sides. So now you can see from time to time, one of the corners of the strips needs to be shaped to the angle that is necessary to follow the boat. And this is done by just uh, scribing a line with a, uh, another straight edge piece of wood and then cutting it down with an X-Acto knife or a pocket knife and then actually using a block plane to smooth it out. And uh, once you do this about five times, you're an expert. And be careful not to push your board off of the table while you're working on it. That would make you look really stupid. So I have finished stripping out the port side of the hull and it was a bit of a hot mess. Um, I kept trying as hard as I could to make nice um, uh, weaved um, interlays in these tight turns, but basically the bottom line was the only thing I could do was a simple overlay pattern um, from the top. And when I do the other side, it should take me a um, fraction of the time it took me to do this side now that I know what I'm doing. Um, there's going to be quite a few gaps and mistakes over here based on that. And if I were a perfectionist, I would repeat or rebuild all of those. But at this point, I'm trying to build a functional hull and it's going to be fine. It's just going to visibly look uh, slightly microscopically different, the port side to the starboard side, um, when it's all said and done. But uh, in the end, nobody's going to notice. So uh, I also ran out of glue. So I got to go get some more glue and then I'll go ahead and finish up the other side. So just about another 45 minutes and I had the other side buttoned up. Um, and since I did simple overlapping strips, I didn't have to take a lot of time to fit them. So uh, that worked a lot easier. Um, now it's time to flip her over and uh, strip out the deck, which because it's flat should be significantly easier. So now you can see with it flipped over and getting ready to do the deck. There is some still some curve on the chine that we're going to have to work with. But the main part of the deck is it's completely flat leading right up to the nose. And this is, by the way, it's perfectly, it's very lightweight. It's easy to pick this up and move it around. Um, but I got some uh, foam blocks to kind of set it on for stability. And um, there are some gaps, as you can see, in some of the strips in the bottom, but those are all going to be filled with wood filler long before we fill it with a, before uh, finishing with uh, epoxy and fiberglass. But so far, so good. The major difference between uh, stripping the deck compared to the hull is that I cannot glue the ends of the strips to the transom or to the nose. Because if I did that, I wouldn't be able to pop the deck off to get the form out later. So um, I will, uh, that the first uh, strips I'll be putting will not be glued in specifically, obviously, on the edge, uh, under the shear strip. Um, and no, I'll put some masking tape over the nose and the transom, and I will not be applying glue there. 
So I took my remaining strips and I kind of laid them out on the deck of the board uh, with the best strips that I can get down straight flat and by uh, separated by colors. And as you can see, I separated some um, low uh, or very light colored ones with some very dark colored ones and you can almost make like a racing stripe pattern in the boards uh, just by looking at the different uh, textures. And I also uh, chose boards that don't have any knots in them. Uh, I am gonna have to uh, rip a few more strips to get the ends done, um, but this will give me a good start. So this is pretty good for one afternoon and evening. Um, I've got was thinking like 17 strips along the deck, but unfortunately, ran out of strips. Um, I have a few left, but I kind of took uh, the entire top part of the um, transom and nose is completely covered. So it's going to take some more complicated uh, stuff to do the rest and to take on the chine. So uh, I've got to get some more wood, rip some more strips. Probably just one more, uh, one more board will be more than enough. I'm probably 10 or 15 strips shy is all I have. Okay, so here is after uh, one Sunday afternoon and evening, and then a Monday evening, probably about, I don't know, six, let's, uh, seven hours total. The boat is completely stripped. The board is completely stripped. Um, uh, there were already a few design issues that I recognized with my forms that I would do differently if I were gonna do it again. Number one, I would make the, uh, forms squared off. I would not probably try and do as much of the chine issue as I did. There you can see the general shape. And um, the next step is the real fun step. This is when you take this blocky, angular, mucked up looking shape and start smoothing out the hard angles in it and rounding over the edges and making something that looks uh, round and smooth. So quite a bit of work to do. All these staples, after all the glue dries, all the staples are gonna to have to come out. That's gonna be probably a couple hours of work in and of itself. There's gonna be quite a bit of wood filler to employ here uh, because there were some pretty big gaps that happened. But uh, overall, it's still gonna be a pretty darn functional design. And I think it's gonna work just fine. As a side feature, this is the entire stack of my leftover scraps. I actually guesstimated the most efficient use of wood possible. Um, I literally was using my last strips for the last long strips that I had with very little wastage. I'm pretty proud of that, but just got lucky. Mm -hmm.